All right. I'm sure you guys are more familiar with this. Hard Body Harrison. Yes. Familiar with Hard Body? Of course. I used to wrestle in WCW with Hard Body Harrison. And for those who might not remember the name, he was the guy that wore like the Florence Griffith joiner tights of one long tight and one short tight. If you guys remember those. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. so, so did you, I'm sure you, did you wrestle against him at all? So I never had a match with Harbaugh, but so I can give you a little bit of a background Harbaugh. I know, I know obviously he had a lot of crimes that we'll discuss, but he was a guy that um, I remember being backstage waiting to go to the ring for my match against Mike Rotundo uh, in, uh, in MGM studios in, 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 in Orlando. We were filming, it was called WCW worldwide. And Hardbody Harrison was supposed to wrestle Alex Wright. And they were arguing over who was going to be the heel. Heel is obviously the bad guy. Babyface is the good guy. And Hardbody Harrison had this, like, like a bar that you used to warm up. But it's like an accordion in the middle. Like Hulk Hogan used to use it in the yeah. 80s, like a pump-up bar. And they're arguing, like, I'm the heel. No, I'm the heel. And Alex is German, so he has us. No, I'm the heel. No, I'm the heel, man. No, I'm the heel. And <laughs> Alex took this pump-up bar from Hardbody and hit him over the head with it, and they got into a fight. And right as the fight was going, my ring music was playing, and I had to go to the ring, and I never got to see the end of the fight. And I remember Mike Rotund was like, this fight's a lot better than our match is going to be. We should just watch the fight. So <laughs> he was kind of a, of a little bit of a, of a hothead, shall we say. And he was constantly pitching ideas where he wanted to be the black sting uh, and call himself Stang, S-T-A-N-G. And he would pitch all these ridiculous storylines where, where DDP had the diamond crystals and he would steal the diamond crystals and put them in a, this is true, put them in a tank of piranhas to protect the diamond crystals. And then DDP and Hardbody would have to have a match or DDP and Stang would have to have a match to where you'd put somebody's head in the piranhas to get the diamond crystals. So he was a little bit uh, uh, out there, shall we say. So that's the background of what I know about Hardbody Harrison. Now tell us what kind of went on with him maybe during his WCW career or afterwards. Well, on August 18th, 2005, Hardbody Harrison was arrested for keeping eight women locked up as sex slaves. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, we just talked about Barraza who was sold as a sex slave. And now we have this guy who is kind of on the other end of the table. So yeah, like you said, he was working for the WCW, um, but he would lure women in with the promise of helping them financially. He would help them find housing and then he would trap them in one of the two homes that he owned in Cartersville. And he would force the women to have sex with clients for money. And if they didn't comply, then he would brutally beat them and threaten their lives. So he was basically a pimp, but I mean, using these women as sex slaves. So, so not literally holding them hostage uh, while well, they were working for him as a pimp, but, but, but then when they were not working, they'd be living in his house kind of in a, in a prison st uh, atmosphere. Exactly. Yeah. This is more like sex trafficking back before we right. had the word for it. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so, interesting here before you continue on, I'm just reading some of your notes. And first of all, I love this line that Harrison was a WCW jobber who would get his ass kicked day in and day out in the ring. <laughs> yeah. But, but you guys have an interesting question here about, uh, about the life of, of people who constantly lose the business. And does that weigh on them mentally to, to get beat every single time? And maybe that leads to his, like you said, his, his desire to have to dominate. But, you know, I think there's some guys in the wrestling business that understand their place. And it was a lot more prevalent back then in WCW or in WWE, WWF at the time when you were hired to be a jobber, you know, an enhancement talent is the much more politically correct word. But there's other guys, too, that are brought in that probably have higher expectations. And we know Harbody did because he had all these plans and ideas. So to lose all the time probably does weigh on you. And I even remember, I think he even took a backdrop into a swimming pool once when we used to work in Panama City at Club La Vila. So he's low, low level. Um, so, you know, that could contribute if you have bigger dreams and bigger hopes, maybe because he did lose all the time. He started thinking, well, you know, I'm going to start dominating some some people myself here since I'm the one who's always being dominated in my job. Yeah. And I, I mean, I can recall people who made a career. I mean, Barry Horowitz made a career. Absolutely. Out of this, right. Like he's, yeah. I remember his name. I don't know that he ever won a match. Uh, so there are some people you're right that really embraced it, but 
even the stories that you're sharing about hard body Harrison, he obviously had some control issues where he felt like he needed to have a voice in what was happening or he needed to have some level of control. And when he kidnapped these women, that was a way to exercise that. Yes. Well, exactly. You know, I mean, and then, so let's continue on. So what other things was he doing? These heinous crimes that he was committing? Yeah. I mean, that was really the, the gist of it. It was just awful crimes, but thankfully he was arrested when one of the women was able to get outside of the house and approach the police officer on the street. He was able to tell him what was going on and what was happening to the other ladies. So he was arrested. He faced multiple, multiple counts of forced labor, aggravated sexual abuse, sex trafficking, witness tampering, and conspiracy. So he's in jail. He's being charged. He's facing life in prison. And the dude actually decided to represent himself on the stand. I don't know this guy. I mean, obviously he's not a great dude, but this is a really bad decision. If you're facing life in prison, I need somebody a lot smarter than myself to represent me in, in, in this trial. You know what I mean? So yeah. well, it sounds like he had a lot of confidence and felt like he was a very intelligent individual with a lot of great ideas. So just based on what we know, this isn't surprising, but anytime we cover a case where somebody represents themselves, we kind of know where it's going to end up. Well, how did it end up? Yeah, he was, uh, let's see. Jamie, do you remember what happened to him? Yeah, he was given a full life sentence without the possibility of parole. Yeah. And he's still in prison for these crimes. Thankfully, he has no parole day set, obviously. So he's going to spend the rest of his life in prison, which is more than we can say for Juana Barraza, technically. Even though she likely will, we know that Hardbody Harrison's really never going to get out of prison.